Well, Sean, while we get a, a few last minute little things set up, um, yeah, thanks for thanks for stopping by. We're uh, we're really excited to to learn about subquery and how you've integrated Agoric. Um, we'd love to uh, just kind of if you want to give an introduction about yourself and um, your role with subquery and um, and I think a bit about a uh, um, what kind of interested subquery in, in in integrating Agoric? That'd be awesome. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so I'm a, uh, a technical educator here, basically trying to share the knowledge uh, of how subquery works, and uh, working with a lot of uh, people in the ecosystem, such as yourselves, trying to get data from the blockchain, really. And um, yeah, we we try to integrate to as many chains and help projects as well. Um, in the developer ecosystem to help the devs grab data from the blockchain so they can continue building the amazing uh, apps and apps uh, in the blockchain space. That's great. Yeah, and I saw on your site, you, you you folks are integrated with, I think, over 100 chains. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. And I've, I've probably seen a slide on that as well. So um, across okay. various ecosystems as well. Awesome. And I think... Um... Uh, just before I, I introduce some folks on the Agoric side, I, I'd, I'd love to maybe get a high level of what um, what attendees today and anyone who watches this in the future might uh, might be getting out of this workshop and, and a bit of this. Yeah, great. So um, basically, it's a, a short, we kind of call it like a lunch and learn, right? So it's 20, 20, 25 minutes sort of thing with some Q&A, um, just to understand what subquery is, uh, what problem it solves, um, and, and a quick demo, uh, a live demo on how we can actually get data from the Agoric uh, blockchain, the Agoric network, really quickly in a Docker environment within uh, you know minutes, basically. Fantastic, awesome, awesome. Um, so it looks like we are set recording video as well now. Um, I'll, I'll quickly just, um, I think we have Diego here, who's our director of DevRel, and, and Sufyan, who's on the product team at Agoric. I don't know if you guys uh, want to say hello quickly <laughs> before we get kick this off. Hello, this is Sufyan Khan. I'm the uh, product manager here at Agoric. Um, super excited to uh, watch and learn. Yeah, and also, uh, it's I'm Diego, by the way, so perhaps some of you have uh, seen me some of the office hours from time to time. And uh, really, it's kind of funny because one of the biggest questions that I wanted to start with was like, what is subquery and, and how developers can use it? So it seems that it, uh, there's already a slide for that. So I'll just wait uh, for the answer and try to follow along too. Cool. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So uh, yeah, go for it, Sean. We'll uh, we'll jump in with questions as we go, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the Agoric Subquery Virtual Workshop on Data Indexing. Let me jump to the next slide. So hopefully you can all hear me well, which sounds good, like you can. And you can also see the slides move along as well. Um, a quick agenda today, we'll quickly talk about the problem discovery, you know, what is the problem, and then uh, what is the solution that subquery is trying to solve. We'll go through what, the how, and then we'll jump into a very quick demo, actually, that um, you, it's possible to follow along as well if you have your system set up. Uh, very quick demo on how we can grab data from Agoric in real time. I mean, fingers crossed, <laughs> it should work. I, I did test uh, just before and then some Q&A at the end. However, if you do have any questions, feel free to type into the chat window as well. Uh, and I'll monitor that as we go along also. So let's jump in. Uh, the most obvious question is, um, you know, what is the problem we're trying to solve here? Well, um, the idea is to grab blockchain data as quickly as possible from the actual chain itself to drive the amazing applications that everyone's trying to build, right? So we're trying to answer the question of where and how to get blockchain data. And of course, traditionally, we can go to the actual blockchain itself uh, using RPC, um, but it can be quite cumbersome, uh, take a bit of time. So subquery, in the next slide here, is what we call an end-to-end -end blockchain indexing solution. Right? So in subquery, we've got three pieces of the puzzle, so to speak. We've got this open source SDK. Uh, you go ahead and you can download this, you can run it, and then you can start indexing blockchain data immediately. Right? Uh, the next piece in the middle here is that subquery also has a managed services solution. 
Because once you've created your project, you've got to run it somewhere. Right? You can either run it locally, which is what everyone does for testing and development. You can either host it on, say, AWS, Google Cloud, and also on our managed services as well. So that's another option. And then the third piece of the puzzle is you can actually run it in a decentralized network marketplace. And this is actually quite exciting because um, there's a concept of different participants in the network, one of them being a, an indexer. They grab data, they run projects, and they provide this data. And then you've got consumers who uh, consume the data. And of course, they pay for that uh, service. And then other participants include uh, delegators, for example, who can uh, state tokens of the network and all that good stuff. So the three main areas of this end-to-end -end blockchain indexing solution. So that's a, an overview of what subquery is. Uh, a lot of people ask, you know, why subquery? What does it do? What does it provide? Well, first of all, if we look at the top, uh, top here, we've got uh, it's open source, as mentioned. Uh, it's also easy to use, and hopefully you'll see this in the demo shortly. We use a Docker container to run projects very quickly on your local host so that you can download it and see data being returned within minutes. Uh, fingers crossed, as mentioned. Um, it's simple as well, because you only really have to modify three files, the schema, the manifest, and the mappings file. Uh, don't worry, you won't have to remember this because I will be uh, uh, repeating this in the demo. It's very customizable because with this schema file, you can actually specify the exact data that you need from the blockchain in order to power your app. Right? Uh, it's feature rich. So there's lots of cool features, including, uh, for example, if you provide the contract address, um, what subquery does is it grabs the ABI file, which is basically like a, a function definition file, and it can actually uh, half or you know build 80% of the project for you, actually. It's got other things like syntax discovery, historical state querying, et cetera. Um, it's fast because remember, you, you're not grabbing all the data from the blockchain, only the data that you need to power your app. So it's very quick. It's also real time because you can access the data as soon as it appears on the blockchain. You don't have to wait until it's finalized or confirmed, right? which could take maybe five, 10 minutes, et cetera. Um, one of the key features is it's multi-chain. And this is really neat because yes, you can, anyone can build a project that can grab Agoric data, but inside the ecosystem, you can actually point to other chains and also across ecosystems. So you can actually aggregate you know, maybe uh, a you know data from uh, Polkadot, from Cosmos, from Near, Algorand, and EVM-based chains as well, all within one project, and then it it goes into in the back end one database table. So effectively, you've got a single API. You know, people call it unified API that uh, your application or other consumers can query and grab. Um, it's flexible, as mentioned different hosting options, and also compatible with EVM and WASM. And this is important because we know the EVM, the Ethereum space is huge with many, many projects there. So again, a quick overview of uh, why subquery. And here's a quick diagram here of the supported networks. You can see a whole bunch across EVM, Polkadot, quite a number there. Uh, we're the leading indexer in Cosmos as well. And you can see the Agoric uh, logo there. And then some down below, Algorand, Near, and Stellar. And it's continually growing as well. Some of the uh, versions in the release, uh, some of the uh, features in version 2 release, uh, increasing performance, as mentioned, uh, real-time indexing of unfinalized block, We've got an inbuilt testing framework, um, indexing data from multiple endpoints, as mentioned, and a whole bunch of other features here. Again, I'm, I won't go into detail on every single one of them, but I think you get the idea. So let's go and take a quick look at Agoric. Um, for each one of the networks, we create a startup project. And this is basically a boilerplate template to help you get up and running really quickly, right? Instead of starting from zero. The link 
is down below, you can go ahead and uh, scan the QR code, taking you directly to it as well. But what I'll be doing is taking this code and running it very shortly. You do need some prerequisites if you do want to follow along. Any developers who are watching will probably have Node already installed. Otherwise, you can go and download it, uh, run brew install Node on a Mac. Uh, Docker, fantastic application. Um, this can be obtained from docker.com or, again, using brew. So most likely, the one and two you'll probably have as a developer. The last one is the subquery CLI. And this can be installed by running npm install uh, chief for global at subquery CLI. So this is the one you'll probably need. And what I can do is I can, let's put this into the chat for anyone interested. There we go, it's just in the chat there. And what we'll do is we'll go through three simple steps, right? Once we've got the, the code, we're actually going to check out the schema file. This defines the shape of the data that you want to index. We'll go and configure the endpoint and the filters in the manifest file. So where are we going to get the blockchain data from and any filters that we want. And then we'll transform the data in our mappings file. So this is really step number three is the guts of it. That's where the coding takes place. So three simple steps. And again, um, the goal here is to index or transfer events on Agoric. So it'll probably be a lot more clearer if I jump into the actual demonstration. So let's go across. I've changed into um, VS Code. So hopefully you can still see this. And I've got the command line. Let me increase the font size here. So the first thing I'll do is of course, you can go ahead into. Um, Are you showing the VS Code? Ah, okay. Give me a second. Thank you for that. Let me. So this. Can you still? Can you see it now? I uh, can, can only see the uh, presentation, um, the website screen. Okay. Got it. Let me. Uh... Oops. Let me share the screen again. Oh, here we go. Got it. Let me share the. OK, I was sharing an application screen, not my actual desktop, but now I'm sharing my desktop. Oh, there you go. Yep. Cool. All right. So VS Code here. Um, I've got the terminal down below and I could get clone the link I showed previously. But what's neat is that if you've got subquery installed via NPM before, I can go subql. Actually, let me just go. Uh, to help, here we go. So I go dash dash help. It'll see, it'll show a version that I'm running, 4.1. And what I'll do is go subql init for initialize. And then I'm going to give it a project name. So let's go Agoric uh, Workshop Example. Hit enter. Right. And what it's going to do is it's going to give me a list of network families that I can use. So EVM, the ones I mentioned earlier, Algorand, Cosmos, et cetera. Uh, and then let me go to Cosmos, hit enter. And you can see all the different networks in, inside here, which at the top, we've got Agoric. Pretty cool. If you guys start with A, you're top of the list, hit enter. And then I want to use the Agoric starter project. Hit enter. And then uh, it's got some default parameters, the endpoints. I'll just hit enter to accept it. So enter, uh, I'll enter all these defaults. And then the workshop is ready. So what I'll do is let's uh, cd into the folder. On the left-hand side here, I've got my files. I'll cd into a core. And I'm going to run yarn install first, just to download the dependencies. This will take about 40 seconds, 60 seconds. 
And while this is running, I'm going to open the schema file because this is the file I talked about defining the shape of your data. So you can modify this, but in this example, what we're saying is that we want to grab out the block height, the transaction hash, the recipient, the sender, and the amount. And then down below, we're going to grab the message, and again, similar fields. But this could be um, anything you want, really. It's up to um, the developer to decide. So that's the schema file. And then remember I talked about the manifest file, which is this project.ts. So this file here, it defines the endpoint of where you're going to get the data from. So this is the endpoint, the RPC endpoint that we're using. And many of you may be familiar with this. And then also down below, we've got the filter in data sources. Oh, we're also defining the start block, right? This at 11.6 million. And then we've got some filters down below, um, such as we're filtering on the transfer type and then the, the message as well. Now, if you don't have a filter, you'll end up indexing the entire blockchain. Um, and that could take some time, right? So that's why we have filters as an option. And one thing I'll do is with my start block, I'm going to change this to the latest block uh, because um, the endpoint here is not a, a full node archive. So if it starts indexing at 11 million, it won't have that data. So what I'll do is I've got the Agura Explorer here and the latest block is 12, 12 million here. So I'm just going to copy this in and replace it. That just for this demo, right? So let's save this. And then um, the third file is, as mentioned, the mapping handle file. This is where all the coding takes place. So you can see here, we've got the handle message. When that comes in, we want to create a message object, so to speak. And you may see block height, transaction hash, to from. This is where the actual data comes from, right? Message dot message dot decode message uh, dot from address, for instance. Okay, so. Question. Yes. So you can only connect to RPC nodes, not archive nodes, or is that possible as well? Oh, we would prefer archive nodes because that's where all the data sits. Um, the current endpoint here we're using is a pruned node. Got it. So and and by it. default, by default, pruned nodes are what comes with the connection, or we can connect this to, let's say, KJ nodes, archive nodes. Like, can we modify where we want to connect yes. it? Yeah, you can definitely modify, it and uh, you'll notice that it's also an array, so you actually provide more than one as well. So if one fails, it'll go to another, the next one, for instance. Perfect. Thank you. Right. No worries. OK, so you'll see that I've, the dependencies have been downloaded. The next step is to run yarn code gen. What this command does is it just auto generates the types. And then the next one is yarn build. So I'm just going to build the code. Like so. You can see I haven't modified anything in the three files because this is a template. It's designed to work um, out of the box. And then what I'll do is I'm going to run yarn start docker. Like so. Now, what I could have done is just run yarn dev, right? Because what yarn dev does is if I look at the package.json file, you see that. Yarn dev is actually a shortcut for code gen, build, and starting Docker. But I'll just do it separately. Start Docker like so, and hit enter. And then I've got Docker in the background here. Um, you'll see I've got, it's downloading uh, the various images. It's got three. So it's got Postgres, the database, it's got the node, and the GraphQL engine as well. So this is probably uh, take about 30 seconds. And once this is running, what you'll find is that in this other screen here, I've got 
what we call the playground. So this is localhost 3000. And then I'll go to another screen here. And what I'll do is in the readme file, there's actually a, um, a sample query, GraphQL query that you can copy and run. So I'll do this in the readme. Paste this in here, hit run. And you'll see that uh, nothing has come back yet. And let's go and look at the logs down below. And you can see it's starting to grab some data here. It's fetching, you can see down below. And this is probably the, uh, the longest part because if I hit maybe take a minute or so uh, let me revisit this um, shortly. But in the first tab, just like all demos and cooking shows, I'll pull out the cooked chicken. And this is actually what happens here. When you hit run, you actually can see the data coming back. And you can also cross-check this by taking the transaction ID uh, into the Agora Explorer as well. So for example, let me copy this uh, transaction hash. Go into the Agoric Explorer, hit, put paste in the transaction here. And this is the particular uh, transaction that I was indexing earlier. And you can see down below, we've got the data, the amount. So to and from address, you'll see the amount is uh, 1400. You should see uh, 1400 just there. All right, so that's the quick comparison. I go back to my first tab, hit run. Still indexing here. But yeah, the uh, the last example was at block uh, 12.29 million. Uh, this one we're indexing at, let me take a look. Twelve point three million. So again, just takes a, a, a while, but eventually will work. <laughs> so I'll just pause here to see if there are any further questions. Okay, so nothing at the moment. I'll leave this running and let's see if we do get some data back shortly. However, let me jump back into the, uh, the slide. I'll leave this in the background. I'll keep refreshing it as we go along. So basically, we had a quick look at what is subquery, an end-to-end -end blockchain indexing solution. Um, why use subquery? for those uh, various reasons on the outside, fast, flexible, uh, multi-chain, et cetera. And then we looked at the three simple steps to create a project, which was the schema file to define the shape of your data, the manifest file to decide where we're getting the data from and what filters we want to apply. And then we saw, kind of saw all the transfer events on Agoric with the uh, example that I created already uh, and I'm still waiting for indexing data to come back. Uh, the reason why it could take a while, a while is sometimes it's looking through the blockchain and it doesn't find the exact data that it wants so it's, it's searching um, bypassing the various blocks based on the filter that we have. Um, just quickly on the next slide um, the subquery decentralized network and the tokenization of the network is the next big thing uh, to completely decentralize the application stack. Uh, we've launched a subquery uh, pre mainnet. It's actually live. It's called Kepler. There's a URL to it, um, and anyone can go in. Uh, it's, it's actually a closed beta at the moment, and we're slowly releasing it out to the wider community. So that's the subquery network. And here's a quick link um, for more information on our tech documentation um, and 
There are lots of examples there, which I'll show shortly. And a couple of links uh, for interest. Uh, feel free to give me a shout on Telegram as well if you do have any questions. I, I've actually joined the Discord uh, in Agoric, so feel free to ping me there as well. And other than that, let's jump into some Q&A. And I shall, oh, here we go. So I just hit um, run, and you can see we've got some data coming back. And this is at block height 12.3 million with a, uh, an amount. And again, if I did copy that transaction hash, you'll see that the data matches as well. So there we go. And I'm only returning the first five. I've limited it in the query as well. So it actually worked, uh, which is good. It takes a bit of time. And as you, as you know, um, it's, it is a live demo, so <laughs> it could be network connectivity issues, et cetera, but it's, it's um, good to see some data coming back. And again, I'll just quickly show you the documentation here. Um, got a quick start of the various uh, chains and networks as well to inside Cosmos. Um, we'll be adding Agoric in here shortly. And if there are, if there's anyone interested, I uh, would love to um, help uh, build other projects and support the dev team as well. So, uh, any questions? I just wanted uh, to ask. Oh, yep. Well, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, go for it. Sorry. I just wanted to ask if in the documentation also uh, you can find some samples that could be used to get it started or to get a little bit of an idea of the type of projects that you can build on. Yeah, definitely. So um, let's go ahead and look at, for example, and so Cosmos, you know, Akash, I mean, as mentioned, we'll shortly add our one here, but you've got um, Akash, which is uh, this indexes all reward transactions for delegators on the network. We've got Archway. Um, and then there's actually a link to the final code base as well. So lots of examples on um, for different projects on how to grab various bits and pieces uh, in the documentation. And if you, if you don't see anything, just give us a shout and we'll... Uh, either create it or link you to it. Perfect, thank you. Uh, there is a question from K, KG, KJ. Um, how long does indexing take, for example, uh, we want to index uh, a million blocks? Um, good question. Um, it really depends on the, uh, the, the filter, but if you're returning a million blocks, I, I don't have a time, an exact time, but the, if, if it's hosted, I guess, um, on a standard uh, infrastructure network with low latency, then it shouldn't take too long. I can actually, um, it's, it's quite hard to answer because it depends on how, how much data is coming back. Um, but yeah, I, I'd have to get back to you on that and get more information. Um, do you only need RPC endpoint for indexing? Correct, correct. Because uh, this project, the key point is you know, where is the data coming from? And in the manifest file, it's got this uh, endpoint parameter. So this must be provided for the project to know where to go to. But what happens is in the starter project, uh, all of this is defined. So when you download it and run it, it should work and you just start to modify it. Uh, John, great presentation. Thank you so much for it. Um, really, <clears throat> really learned a lot. Um, could you explain possibly, <clears throat> excuse me, or uh, for a developer who's new to crypto and isn't uh, as familiar with how like blockchain applications work, it's maybe like an example of uh, an application that might uh, that might utilize the uh, like an indexer and sort of how it fits in the architecture of that application, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, sure thing. Um, what 
users typically do, a lot of the use cases um, are around, I mean, we're grabbing data from the blockchain, right? So what can you do with that data? A lot of people use it to drive a dashboard of, um, you know, uh, an analytics dashboard, right? Of um, say an ex a block explorer, right? We've got uh, customers using SubQuery to power a blockchain explorer. That's one example. Um, another example is a wallet. Uh, for example, Nova Wallet is one example where you can actually, because we saw transfers, right? Uh, you know, to, from, amount, and that's exactly what a wallet typically shows. So you can use SubQuery to uh, power a, a uh, blockchain wallet, for instance, um, you know, Block Explorer, Analytics, uh, those are the main ones. Great, thank you so much. Plus it's data, so you know, it, it, up, up to your imagination, really. <laughs> We had a question, uh, Sean, from uh, Patrick here. Is, is it possible to write queries for the Cosmos query module or just the transaction TX? Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw that in the chat. Thank you for that. Um, for the Cosmos query module, um, what does that mean? Because you can grab uh, whatever data is on the Agoric blockchain. Um, if it's available in the Explorer, for example, then you can you can access it in in subquery. So, so for example, here, um, this is the data for this particular message, which is a transfer. But if I look at another block and look at the payload within, then whatever's there that you can see, you can extract. Hopefully that answers the question. Uh, yeah, so things like Cosmos quote data. I mean, if it's if it's visible in the uh, block explorer, you will be able to grab it. Um, there's another question coming through. Does RPC endpoint have to be with the indexer? It has to be with indexer enabled. Um, does RPC endpoint have to be with the indexer enabled? Um, not 100% sure what that means, but uh, you do need the endpoint. And it has to be accessible, um, you know, ideally uh, an archive node, as mentioned. Oh, if it's disabled, can subquery um, index? It can, no, it cannot. I mean, if you remove this, then the project won't know where to get the data from or what to query. Uh, okay, another question's come through. Um, I've built subgraphs for the Ethereum database, took an initial look through the project. It seems it's similar. Uh, and wondering if my familiarity with building subgraphs applies to subquery, and if they're different, um, what are they, uh, how is it different? Yes, that is a very good question. It's actually very similar to subgraphs. And um, in fact, in our documentation, we've got a an article on um, the how to migrate over, if you are interested as well. And it's actually um, very similar in terms of the, the files. Um, the differences, let's see if I can, find the migration. Yeah, there is a graph migration, here we go. So here's a, an example, which I'll paste here. And the main difference is, for example, uh, if you want to do a multi-chain project, as mentioned, you can actually provide uh, multiple endpoints here uh, and, and have multiple uh, project YAML files all within one project, which is the main difference, right? Making um, a multi-chain project really easy and simple to create. There's a whole bunch of others, but I know we're a bit over time, um, but yeah, uh, that article, that link should give you more information. Um, can I see what index queries others have built and reused from a project? You, 100% you can, and uh, that's the best way to learn actually. You can copy other projects. Um, 
various different ways in the documentation. You can check out the quick start for the other different chains. Um, and also, it's all open source, so in our GitHub repo here, you can go in and check out uh, whatever ecosystem you're interested in. So, you know, Cosmos here, data projects. And then you can dig into all the other projects and see uh, what's been built. Well, Sean, this was uh, this was awesome. Great. Thank you so much for your time. I think uh, I don't see any other questions, so I think we can probably wrap up there. If anyone has anything else, definitely drop it in the channel, and we can uh, we can just address it uh, after the workshop. Excellent. And thank you, and everyone else on the call. Hopefully, it was useful. Uh, just a very quick a demo of um, what SubQuery is, how it works, um, and there's bunch of contact information. Um, if you want to get in touch, uh, feel free to do so. Otherwise, uh, thanks once again, and hope, it, hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Thank you very much, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Uh, thanks, all. Diego Supion for joining as well. Thank you, uh, all the guests who joined. Stop by.